Do you think companies like NVIDIA or Revolut create pitch decks with GPT by just writing a prompt? No, there is a critical problem with AI pitch decks. Let me tell you what it is. If you're writing with GPT a pitch deck about a new Airbnb, for example, don't expect that you would be the first and only one to do this. There will be multiple other people who ask GPT the same thing, and guess what? GPT is not that creative in this sense. It's going to answer very similar answers to all those people. So everyone will have an Airbnb pitch deck like yours. And in the world of pitch decks, in the essence of what it is, you're trying to convince an investor to buy your product. And if everyone has this pitch deck, then what makes you so different? So no, don't do that. Don't just go to GPT, Gemini, Claude, whatever the tool is, whatever smart it is. Don't just head there and ask it to create a pitch deck for you. That is definitely, I assure you, it is not going to work. And I were, do this for a living. I've been a consultant for over 15 years and I worked with clients who raised a good sum of money from pitch decks like mine. Now, let me tell you how to do this in a right way. You're not going to use GPT. You're not going to use Claude. You're going to use a mix of them. The integration of all of them creates a pitch deck that is actually usable and pitchable to an investor. Let's get to let's get to the guide. All right, so the first step we're going to do is create a project on Claude. That doesn't mean we're going to use Claude in the whole thing. It just means this is how I want to start. And the reason why I chose projects, because when it comes to gathering documents and ideas together, Claude does a very good job in this. Let's give it a shot. So we're going to say that the project is called Imgero. It's one of the projects I'm actually working on, but yeah, it's just a placeholder for now. Um, Describe your goals. Let's say we're creating a pitch deck for an image generation website. Image generation using AI website or tool, let's say. So that's the, as easy as it gets. All right. So if I am creating this sort of pitch deck, I, this is good as a, as, a, as a brief for Claude. And you're going to understand why we're going to use this for Claude once we start talking and writing and actually engaging in the whole process. So first up, set project instructions. Here I would like to tell Claude, do not write me a pitch deck from your imagination. What I want to do is I want to be giving you instructions and you following them. Sometimes research, sometimes you'll research, sometimes you'll be asked to write. Easy, just very basic instructions. And then if you have more information, you could write it here. I would write here, Imgero is approaching uh, seed funding. I am looking for a deck that would resemble the likes of NVIDIA's deck. I'm not really doing that because Imgero is an image generation tool, so it doesn't really make sense that we would put NVIDIA, but still we're doing this just for this practice. Uh, in terms of technology, the technological feel here, you have to you have to be as much as much uh, explanatory as possible. It's okay to write a lot and to tell Claude as much as possible about your ideas. This is why I like the plot projects of Claude because it gives you this playground of just writing your ideas. The technological feel, technological feel, the technological feel of a new invention. You can keep talking more and more and more and I advise you to do so, but this is just basic ideas. Now, what is interesting is the knowledge here. You need to add as much knowledge as possible. If you're working on, on a project and you have an MVP, like for example, a, a website, then you should add it here. For instance, Imgero is something I'm actually working on. So this is the server or um, the offline website. It's quite cool. What I would do if I want to create a pitch deck for it is I would copy this whole website, send it to uh, Claude. But a, an easy way to do is to just either print it and save it as a PDF, which would put most of the information that I want. So for example, one of the pages here is called research and it has some numbers that I think might be useful. So I would just print it, save it as PDF. As you can see, all the content is there. So that's what's important. And after I save it as PDF, I can just simply put it here easily. There it is, and just drag it to the to the project knowledge. 
in my projects, I usually almost use 80 or 90% of the project knowledge because I put a lot of information, a lot of data, because the more you put, the more Claude is going to be a second mind. And this is what you're using it for. You're using it as a second mind when it comes to uh, pitch decks or writing in general. And why is that? Because sometimes I forget. Sometimes I forget like, all right, oh, did this client say that, or did this pitch deck involve uh, a battery? Did it involve more, more, more technological features? Uh, what specific technological did this exist? Did this not exist? All these questions that you keep crossing, that keeps crossing your mind, that will require you to go through the documents. That's why we're doing this. For now, this is good. You just need to do this. So, and that is something you just keep on the side when you're working on the pitch deck. So, if it crosses your mind, like, oh, what did I do here, or oh, uh, did this look like that? Additionally, what I would put here is, for example, in this case, if we're writing as NVIDIA, we said, so we can go like NVIDIA corporate presentation, and they usually have one, if I remember correctly, that looks like this. I could also add this presentation. If I want something with the same feel, I would just simply download it and again, put it in my project knowledge to add uh, to add more knowledge in the sense. And now it's gonna even consume more because this is not a small uh, presentation. So it would consume a few more, 5% or so. Um, yeah, so that's the main thing you should do. Now, after that, we're gonna go to my favorite part of, of thinking of a pitch deck. The f question is, who are you writing this pitch deck for? Is it for, uh, is it for an investor? If so, then tell me exactly what this investor is interested in. Is it like an accelerator like Y Combinator or is it an, an angel investor like your parents or your uncle? And in that case, this is my favorite part, which is you open Freeform. It's an Apple software or Miro is also Miro. I think it's also everywhere in the world. And you simply just draw. You draw ideas. You draw here. You say what your product is. So in our case, Imgero, we can immediately start and say Imgero and we can just keep on. It's good to have keyboard shortcuts in this case, but you could just put here and say image generation. So this is what we achieve. This is what we want to achieve. Maybe also part of it is video generation. And then we can say if we're going to connect other APIs, like for example, Runway is a famous API for a video similar to Google Veo 3, I think, Runway API. And then we simply connect all of those. I think there was a connecting way to connect here. Oh, there it is. And then you could just connect this to this and say uh, this one I wanted, for example, with uh, uh, Mid Journey. They don't really have an API, but let's say Mid Journey. It's uh, also another website for uh, AI image generation. So we can do that and keep on doing this for a while until you have your product. Why? Because you need all elements of your product here. After that, you can start writing. Now, here is the, the pitch deck part which is the pitch deck storyboard structure, call it as you want. It's how the flow of ideas would go and questions accordingly. So you have to anticipate what the investor you know, if it's your aunt, would say, uh, what is this technology exactly? In that case, you're going to have to explain what um, AI image generation is. So in this case, in that particular situation, you have to put questions maybe color coded, doesn't have to be the same color. Um, what's this tech? And then put the answer accordingly. And then after that, you can put here, okay, this slide is going to explain it or these slides are going to explain it. So you can, you have to have this three step process in order to understand what the reader wants to have. After years of experience, I'm telling you that a pitch deck is good only if it works. And it doesn't matter if it's so beautiful. It doesn't matter if it's right, if it's well written. What matters is the objective of it. The objective is to sell. Did it sell or did it not sell? And the answer to this question is, did it answer the questions of the reader or not? 
And that's how you should focus. So always focus by writing first the questions of the reader. A lot of people will go like, yeah, but I don't know exactly what the reader would ask. Then you could research. You could research what the perfect structures are from a lot of companies say their own opinions or their VCs or their investors say their own opinions. So you could make it more generic. But it, the more you exert effort on this, the more you exert just a little bit of thinking in it, the more this is going to be a personal and good pitch deck. You can start with the problem, the solution, if this is what you prefer. But some people might already know the problem with image generation, might already know the solution that you're offering. So what they want to look at is statistics and traction. In that case, then you could just make a pitch deck, at least a version of the pitch deck like that. All right, so then you would have your free form or your pitch deck structure ready. This is extremely important. I can't tell you how important this is because this frames the narrative how it should be. The next step would go would be going to GPT. You could do this with Gemini. You could do this with Claude, but I, I don't know why. I prefer GPT when it comes to research. Somehow, I feel like it's a lot better and gave me better results. Now, you're not going to say research image generation that's not what you want. What you want is something in particular. Uh, can you research for me how much image, how much energy image generation tools are exerting? And the, the next part is important. Only get me results from PwC, McKinsey, KPMG, Ernest and Young, Deloitte. For example, I didn't even say or so, because what is going to happen is if you just le leave it without the sentence, it's going to get you things that it thinks are accurate. But ChatGPT doesn't really verify the other websites and the Internet is full of just things that are not true. So you would do it like that and then you would just wait for it to research some things and get you exact details from those companies. And when it does... As you can see here, Deloitte says, etc., etc. The most important thing in all those tools, unfortunately, I still don't trust their sources when it comes to market research. So you're going to have to go to the sources yourself and check whether they see this is a 404, for example. So this might have been removed. You have to check exactly um, if these sources are making sense because this is not what I asked for. Um, and I would have to look at there where it's actually saying it. There you go. And then I have this and then I could actually check if the source is true or not. That's how you should do the research part. At the end of the day, you're not really creating a business plan or a big market research. You're creating market research for the pitch deck, which is usually one or two slides just showcasing the market opportunity. So and don't try to just tell GPT, please don't try to tell AI tools, find me the market opportunity. That is the worst thing you can do because it usually just goes to websites that are very not credible and they're just pitching ideas. So at this stage, you would have your research done, which is a few slides on the pitch deck, not more. And you would have Claude. Always remember, you would have Claude to answer any question you have. Now, the next stage would be the imagery. Now, there are a lot of pitch decks that I've done without any images whatsoever, which were really good. And some of them relied highly on images and they were also good. The key here is your brand. You have to have some sort of brand. And when you have this brand logo and colors, you need to create images that look like the brand. And for this, Sora or even ChatGPT, because it also uses a similar model, are perfect in this sense. But you have to make it similar to your brand. So you would say if your brand logo and colors have a color code of hashtag five four three two one then ask claw uh, sora in this case to create an image with this specific hashtag color code you could say that and then create something now why did i tell you sora not gpt because sora has a few good functions uh, functionalities like remix which could if you like this image you could remix it to create different variants of it with the same colors which is what you need. You need images that are coherent. And for that, this is perfect. Most investors don't really have a problem with AI uh, images if they are not ultra realistic. You could go for ultra realistic because in also in some situations, um, people don't really know the difference between AI images or not. But they would assume now that it's AI image. So if you get a photo shoot and get this model, for example, and take those pictures, 
I would look at it, whether it's real or not, and question whether it's AI. So maybe you should steer away from this whole questioning and create something like the image we saw at the beginning. This is obvious that it's an illustration. Now, investors are not gonna ask, is this created by an AI or drawn by an actual human? It doesn't matter to them. What matters is coherency. This is just part of the pitch deck in the background or so that fulfills the color scheme of the whole pitch deck. So use Sora in this sense. And then finally, what you need to do is to design the presentation. Now we have multiple, a lot of options here. You could write a perfect presentation, but designing it would actually make a huge difference. You could design it with tools like, there are a few websites online, I think, that if you just Google AI presentation maker, you'll find some, but I don't advise on those because they rely on GPT or tools like that to create the content for them. You don't want that, you just want a design. And for this particular reason, I would advise you to do actually a hybrid of two things. You have the option of going to a website like Creative Market and just downloading a PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint template of a pitch deck. And then look for a color scheme that is similar to yours. Sometimes they even have color here. Now they don't. But you would find something in a similar color scheme that, to your uh, product. And then use something like that. My advice to most startup founders, seed or even more than seed, is that this usually does the job pretty well. You're just gonna have to exert some hours in modifying this PowerPoint. Um, so this is how you could design it yourself. But if you're not really having that much time, then what you could do is either hire someone to do that for you on Fiverr or Upwork or, or either Behance, that's also an option, and let them input uh, your content into this, into a template or into their own design. That's also okay. It depends on how much you pay, you want to pay in this sense, or you can use Microsoft Copilot. So you can purchase a PowerPoint template, open it in PowerPoint and use Copilot to just ask it to edit some things. This would also be sort of like a, a middle ground between everything and just tell it, Hey, can you change this slide? For example, and make it look like uh, this slide, for example, and put the sales strategies from my pitch deck and here's my content of my pitch deck, that would be good. It would change it accordingly and then you would exert the least cost or expend the, spend the least cost and have something good uh, as a product. And this would create everything you have as a base. Once you have the storyboard from Freeform ready, everything ready here. You print it as a PDF or you export it as PDF, you put it here. Once you have images, you put them here if, if it takes images. I think it only takes PDFs, but you can also put it. And then you can start writing slide after slide, just saying, okay, so the first slide based on my Freeform or on my pitch deck structure should be what an image AI image generation is. Let's put some statistics. So then ask Claude or GPT. This is your uh, your option here. I would advise Claude is just, they're all the same. Um, first slide, I won't write it because I didn't really put any, uh, any uh, storyboards or anything here, should be about how AI image generation is. Give me a few suggestions and use my research. And then you would already have research that you had from GPT and you also put it in the project knowledge. This would result in the text of a single slide, which is good. Do this for every single slide. Don't just be lazy and go like, create me a pitch deck for the whole thing. Once you do every single slide based on your storyboard or storyboard versions, because you have multiple versions, you could, that's only when you're gonna have a pitch deck that is actually investor worthy. In this case, you use the AI as a, as a co-writer and co-thinker and just answering some questions that would save you time. And this is the perfect way to create an investor level pitch deck using these tools. Best of luck.